Hi everyone, it's Dr. Taya. Uh, welcome back. I just wanted to talk about one very common topic in electrophysiology, uh, which is pacemakers. The uh, pacemakers are quite common. There are many, many, many people who have it, millions of people, in fact, that have it. It's a pretty simple procedure, um, but I wanted to talk about it. So first, a little bit of background to a pacemaker and what its purpose is. The heart has its own electrical system. The heart's a muscle, and any muscle in the body requires electricity to contract. So if you want to squeeze your arm, your brain sends electricity down a nerve, and then it contracts. The same thing is happening on the inside uh, of, of your heart. It has its own electrical system. Basically, the top part of the heart sends electricity, it pauses, and it goes down to the bottom part. That's great when it works well, but people can have problems with either the generation of those impulses or the conduction from the top to the bottom, and they can have slow heart rates, and they can get symptoms such as dizziness, lightheadedness, or even passing out. So. As far as who needs a pacemaker, it's people who have a problem with the electrical system of the heart, which gives them either slow heart rates, which they are symptomatic from, or they have a, a dangerous rhythm uh, that's dangerously slow. And, and those are the people who benefit from a pacemaker. As far as uh, what a pacemaker is, it's uh, pretty straightforward. It has basically two parts. It has a generator or battery pack that has the circuitry and the computer that gives electricity. And then that electricity goes down a wire, also known as a lead, which enters the heart. The implant procedure is pretty straightforward. We make an incision in the skin uh, and we uh, create enough space to put that generator, that battery. And then we uh, enter the vein with a needle. We poke a hole into that vein and that allows us to deliver the wire or the lead into the vein and then into the heart and then that lead goes right into the heart. So I have with me a, a model of, uh, a, of uh, a pacemaker. This is the actual size. It's pretty thin as you can see here and this has the battery and it has the circuitry and then it connects to the wire called the lead and that lead is the part that enters the, the, the vein and then enters the heart. And so this part sits in the chest and this part sits into uh, the heart. The procedure is pretty straightforward. We tend, however, to keep people overnight, one night. We get an x-ray and do what's called an interrogation or a pacemaker check the next day. Make sure everything's fine. 99% of people without exaggeration go home the next day. And in fact, sometimes people can go home the same day. The risks are pretty low. Um, definitely the risks are lower uh, having it than, than not having it. Um, but about 1% risk of injury to the lungs uh, as we enter it, uh, the, 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 the vein. 1% um, uh, risk of infection. Um, fortunately, the, the more serious risks, such as injury to the heart muscle, are, are, are quite, quite rare. The restrictions are pretty uh, minimal, to be honest with you, just, and they're, they're temporary. For the first eight weeks, you can't lift your arm over your shoulder. The reason for that is we pin down, the, we actually sew down the, the wire, the lead, into our shoulder. So if you pull too much on the shoulder, you can actually pull out the lead. Um, so we give you a sling at night so that you don't lift your arm over your shoulder. We also try to protect the incision. We ask that it not be submerged underwater for eight weeks until the skin has a chance to, to fully heal. Um, th that's really about it. You're not supposed to weld or use a high voltage chainsaw because those electrical signals can trick our pacemaker and they could limit uh, 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 the pacemaker from generating electricity. The follow-up is pretty straightforward as well. We see it two weeks after implant, and we see it three months after that. After that, we usually just see people once a year, and we do what's called remote monitoring. Your pacemaker can basically send us the information on your heart every three months and make sure everything's okay. The batteries tend to last about 10 years, um, and at that point, we uh, change the, 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 the battery. So the, the lead that sits into the heart will stay there. But we make an incision, we take out the battery, and then we put a new battery connected to the lead, and then you should be good for another 10 years or so. I hope that helps. It's a pretty straightforward procedure. Um, and if you have any questions, give us a call or leave us a comment. Thanks for your time.